Hello everyone. Today we have here with us Dr. Siddharth Mani, interventional cardiologist at Eni Shravanath Tagore Institute of Cardiac Sciences, Mukundpur. He regularly performs various interventional procedures like coronary angioplasty, pacemaker implantation, AICD and CRTD implantations. Heart disease is one of the main reasons of death and morbidity in today's world. Even the younger people are suffering from heart disease, uh, especially a heart attack. So, sir, we would like to know in detail of what do we understand by the term of heart attack? See, our heart is basically an organ uh, which is uh, like a sac and it is surrounded by muscles. So, the blood is filling inside the sac like this and when the heart is pumping, the muscles are contracting and the blood is ejecting out. So, basically our heart is pumping like this and it is circulating the blood in the entire system and all the organs. Now these cardiac muscles, they get their blood supply from three arteries which are called coronary arteries. These coronary arteries are lying on the surface of the heart and they are carrying blood to each and every muscles of the heart. Now what happens during a heart attack is these arteries either one or more of these arteries get blocked with time with different diseases that we will discuss later uh, and gradually the block increases and increases and ultimately when an artery is totally blocked say 100 percent blocked then the blood supply to the heart muscles is totally cut off now then some portion of the heart muscles are not getting any blood this is what we mean by heart attack so at that moment the blood supply is cut off the muscles are dying the more time elapses, more and more heart muscles dies. Now think, suppose this portion of the muscles are not getting blood from, a, from an artery. Now, so these muscles are gradually getting dead and non-functional. So the heart was previously pumping like this. Now this portion is not pumping, so the heart is pumping like this. So the entire force of the cardiac pumping is decreasing. So patient is having chest pain, shortness of breath, patient may develop synco, patient may develop many other complications like arrhythmias or sudden cardiac death. So this is what do we mean by actually heart attack. So sir, like the, as you mentioned, like so what are the causes of heart attack actually? See, the basically the cause of heart attack is blocking of the coronary arteries. Now the pathophysiology behind this block is atherosclerosis. What is atherosclerosis? Now these blood vessels have an inner lining or a thickness. In the inner lining of the arteries, there is gradual deposition of different substances like cholesterol, like calcium, like different other blood cells, dead cells. And gradually with time, these depositions, they keep on increasing, keep on increasing. And sometimes there occurs ruptures or erosions on the surface of these depositions. Now, whenever there is a rupture or erosion, red blood cells and white blood cells, they tend to sit in that erosion or in that plaque and they gradually keep on increasing forming a blood plug, which we call a white plug or a red plug. Now, this plug of blood cells clog the blood vessel, block the blood vessel and within few minutes or hours, the entire blood flow is cut off. So this is atherosclerosis. Now you can say why do atherosclerosis at all occur? Now there are different uh, etiologies for that. Basically uh, with age, each and every one of us will have some sort of atherosclerosis in all our vessels. But the process of atherosclerosis increases when there is uh, hypertension, diabetes or if the patient is a smoker or the patient has some dyslipidemia like cholesterol or triglyceride uh, problems or patient has a family history and there are certain other risk factors, uh, unusual risk factors like homocysteine, apo, lipoproteins and all those. So these are certain risk factors which are, uh, which will aggravate this process of atherosclerosis. And once this atherosclerosis gradually blocks the lumen and as I said there will be a erosion or a rupture and then over that there will be a blood plug and the artery blood flow will stop. Okay. And sir, as you mentioned in the previous question, like uh, shortness of breath and even chest pain are the symptoms. Other than that, is there any other major symptoms that uh, like we can understand I of understand. heart attack? The actual main symptom of heart attack is chest pain. But before I say about chest pain, you have to understand that there are few groups of patients like diabetic patients, like very elderly patients or sometimes females, they don't complain of chest pain at all. 
so sometimes other symptoms other than chest pain like as i said shortness of breath or sweating or syncope that is the patient getting unconscious these symptoms can be symptoms of heart attack also but the major symptom is chest pain now during heart attack usually the chest pain is very severe it is a compressive or a heaviness sort of chest pain patient will complain that i feel something very heavy a heavy stone is put on my chest like that or somebody says that their uh, my chest is getting compressed with a belt so it is a compressive sensation or a heaviness which occurs along with this shortness of breath or sweating a uh, impending doom patients feel suffocated and all those things but the severity of chest pain is very important in heart attack it is really usually very severe unless they are diabetic and all those and uh, sometimes we get preliminary symptoms suppose the heart attack may evolve over few hours at the initial stage maybe the patient was not having severe chest pain maybe the patient was uh, having chest pain only during walking or rising upstairs like that and gradually over few hours or few days the chest pain keep on increasing so whenever there is a chest pain central chest pain specially and if it increases on exertion or there is associated shortness of breath or sweating or unconsciousness then always rush to the emergency because it might be a heart attack so when the patient will feel any kind of heaviness as you mentioned so in that case patient can expect that he have suffered from a heart attack see uh, from the patient's point of view any severe chest pain he should think of heart attack first because the other causes of chest pain there may be many benign causes of chest pain also like it can be a musculoskeletal pain it can be a acidity and reflux acid disease but those things are to be excluded so if the patient thinks of an heart attack rushes to the emergency we will do an ecg we will do a troponin test and then we can exclude other uh, causes and uh, finally confirm our diagnosis of heart attack so patients at the onset of severe chest pain must Uh, think of an heart attack and go to the emergency that is my point okay so it means that uh, like once he realize and like he have suffered from an attack or maybe he is suffering a chest pain so the first step that he should go like he should do actually that he should he should visit a visit a doctor exactly exactly he first he should visit a emergency and then uh, rest is on the doctors so so what is the exact treatment for heart attack see if the patient reaches us in time the first thing we do is we give them some loading doses of certain drugs like aspirin clopidogrel or other uh, antiplatelet agents and uh, cholesterol reducing agents like atorvastatins and all those so these are called loading doses now uh, from the loading doses point of view i just want to mention that even if the patient is in periphery or even if he is not being able to contact a primary or a tertiary i mean a tertiary care center within time or he is in a primary healthcare setup he should get this loading doses so our primary care physicians who is serving the patients in the peripheries in the villages they also should introduce or should give this loading dose at the very onset of uh, symptoms and then the patient may be referred to a tertiary care center now in a tertiary care center what we do is we do ecgs echocardiography troponins and confirm the diagnosis of heart attack and once we are confirm about an heart attack the best possible treatment is doing a primary angiography i mean go to the cath lab do the angiography see whether there is any coronary artery block or multiple blocks and then if possible the infarct related artery should be opened up as early as possible now after a artery is blo- after an artery is blocked the muscles uh, live for 20 minutes so after 20 minutes passes the muscles are dying and dying so as early as possible if we can open that block so that uh, spares the remaining muscles from dying and that is the best treatment for heart attack and it preserves the heart pumping function and has the best future prognosis now if there is uh, no facility for this primary angioplasty then what we do is we institute certain drugs like streptokinase or radiplase or tenecteplase which help in diluting this clots partially or sometimes fully so that is reestablishes the flow blood flow to certain extent and then on the next day or after few hours he may be referred to a center where angiography is possible and ultimately we need to do an angiography after an angiography we need to see how many blocks are there what is the percentage of the stenosis 
the site of the blocks whether these blocks are calcified or uh, any other complicated things like dissection and all those are present and accordingly we decide whether we need an angioplasty or a bypass so sometimes uh, patients may be treated by only medical therapy like those who in whom the vessels have recanalized maybe spontaneously or maybe with those streptokinase or tenecteplase sort of drugs otherwise uh, most of the patients we see that there is a residual stenosis of more than 70 percent that is a significant stenosis in the coronaries so in those cases mostly they need angioplasty or coronary artery bypass and then uh, medicines there are lifelong medicines there are a big list of medicines which the patient has to continue he has to uh, maintain certain precautions like uh, diet and lifestyle changes and uh, regular follow-ups Okay. So, if like after the treatment, whether it is angioplasty or a bypass surgery, what are the major precautions a patient need to take? Right. The precautions, uh, most important precaution is medicines. So, the doctor will prescribe a list of medicines and those medicines have to be uh, taken at exactly at uh, time and uh, uh, the patient has to be very compliant about these medicines. Number one. Number two is lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes means most important things are stopping smoking or any other tobacco addictions. Uh, dietary changes like uh, decreasing, reducing fat intake. You have to uh, take a fat restricted diet. And if there is diabetes or hypertension, controlling those risk factors are very important. So strict control of diabetes, hypertension and dyslipidemia. And then patients, we usually uh, recommend uh, to avoid strenuous job unless it is very uh, mandatory for the patient. So light activities, avoiding stressful activities, having adequate sleep, light exercise we recommend like morning walks or few aerobic exercises after consultation with physiotherapist or uh, uh, I mean dietitians. We recommend those things. Uh, and uh, mostly medicines, regular follow-ups with doctors and these lifestyle changes. These are the precautions. And uh, sometimes after angioplasty or bypass, we, uh, according to patient symptoms, we recommend subsequent angiographies to check whether the stains are normal and all that. So sir, all these procedures need to be followed once heart attack, like patient have suffered from a heart attack. So I'd like to know like from a younger age only, what, like how can we prevent heart attack? See, uh, we divide the risk factors of heart attack into two groups. One is a modifiable risk factor, one is a non-modifiable risk factor. Now, non-modifiable risk factors are age, sex, gender, race and family history. So, these things you cannot modify. Now comes to the modifiable risk factors like hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, smoking, di diet, exercise, so these are the, uh, I mean, the areas where you can modify. So first thing is you have to regularly check for uh, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, and if they are present, you have to adequately control that. Number one. Number two is stop smoking and other addictions which may be harmful. Number three is, as I said, that you have to uh, follow a, a healthy diet. Now, according uh, the healthy diet is a separate topic which you can discuss hours for. Uh, but mostly what we recommend is uh, less fat, less carbohydrate and more of protein diet and with adequate increase of fruits and uh, intake of fruits and vegetables, adequate intake of dietary fibers and uh, specially you have to choose your oil, you have to reduce your oil intake, fat intake like that and we recommend physical activities. So in our generation physical inactivity is one of the main cause of this uh, heart attacks and atherosclerosis. So physical activities and then if you have some additional risk factors like as I said homocysteines or apolipoproteins so that you may consult a doctor and you can take some medicines for that. So basically it is uh, uh, changing your lifestyle, it is uh, stopping your addictions, it is correcting your uh, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia and uh, once the another important thing is often we find especially in our country that uh, people uh, ignore their symptoms suppose a patient has a chest pain history of chest pain while he is walking or he is rising upstairs or in certain exertional activities but he thinks ki this is due to acidity 
or due to certain other problems so they keep on neglecting those symptoms so these uh, initial chest pains uh, are uh, preliminary signs and symptoms of heart attack so if the patient at that stage come to a doctor and intervene and do a coronary angiography and they uh, do uh, i mean angioplasties or whatever is required before a heart attack occurs then we can prevent a heart attack so uh, maintaining a good lifestyle and uh, being very careful about his own symptoms preliminary symptoms is very important so thank you so much for enlightening us so much on this the topic of heart attack for any further queries kindly drop down your questions in the comment section below thank you